Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. My name is Madhusudan, I work as associate professor in the department of education and educational technology, school of social sciences, university of Hyderabad. Today we will be talking about how community identify and mobilize local resources. When we talk about community participation, the most important thing is identifying the resources and when we identify the resources, mobilize those local resources. For this community involvement is very, very important and we call it community involvement in micro planning. Very important thing that we need for micro planning is the data or the information. The information that map could provide was the number of houses and location of each house in the village. This becomes an important information. The information of the village and ward, the availability of facilities like Anganwadi or any other preschool, location of the school, health care centers, number of people in each household, number of children going to school and the number of children not going to school from each household, the number of literates, illiterates, adults both male and female, these type of in information we will be needing for micro planning. Micro planning can be done in many ways. Micro planning becomes essential in identifying the local resources and mobilizing the resources as we know. So, therefore, micro planning can be done in many ways. Some of the important techniques that we use for micro planning are surveys which are normally done usually in most cases surveys is the common technique that we do. Another important technique we talk about is participatory learning and action technique, we call it PLA technique. Another simple technique we call it FGD that is focus group discussion and also we can use another technique called weaves, it is about uh, understanding villagers perception expectation of the school or general perspectives about the village. Then in some cases, we also need information in a specific cases rather house to house, house to house surveys and also the very commonly used technique, simple technique, another technique that is observation. Now, let us understand one by one. The first, the most commonly used technique, we call it as surveys. surveys as you know, it provides a vital information on the issue of schooling when we talk about characteristics of the household. The characteristics of the household head is his or her age, sex, educational attainment, literacy, their employment status and relation to the child. And Similarly, educational participation among school age population, here we can have three categories, currently attending children, currently attending children, then drop out children, children who dropped out of the school at household level and also even at household level, even we can get children's information who never attended school. With this in mind characteristics of the household head and also characteristics of the school age population. We can also have characteristics of the children by age, sex, their parental survivorship, orphan status, literacy, employment, work, labor and also characteristics of other household members. Because it is also very important thing, the family size, the number of the family members is also an important indicator of child's schooling. So, characteristics of other household members also like according to educational attainment and literacy of mother, father and other household members, their work status, labor, employment. So, all these information uh, even in addition to this we can have household wealth, we can, we can create a wealth index, we can create wealth index number of household members total, number of children, household age and sex 
expenditure on schooling. This overall information we can get at village level. This type of surveys become very important in the sense when we talk about the educational data, most of the educational data that is available at school is derived from school available at school level. Whereas, at planning level, at beginning level, we need to have information at village level in order to start the functioning of the school. So, therefore, household surveys, it is a 100 percent household survey that helps to put information into the micro plan. So, therefore, in most of the cases, communities are involved in micro planning when we say it is about uh, surveys. We take the help of the villagers, with the help of the villagers, we will be doing the community members. When I, when I say villagers, it is about community members. We conduct survey with the technical information, the basic information. This will help where to open the school, how to open the school, how to start our school process, etcetera. The next step we talk about or the next technique we talk about is participatory learning and action technique. This is called as PLA technique. PLA techniques rely on the use of symbols. This approach is effective because it encourages illiterate adults, even illiterate adults can participate in the PLA techniques and even children can contribute, give information regarding certain issues. Thus, PLA increases the number of people's activity in contributing to the dialogue of understanding at micro level. There are various steps in PLA technique. One such technique is cleaning the site for conducting PLA. We need a site, a reasonable space to start PLA technique. It is done in some courtyard in front of everyone. So, everyone in the sense whosoever wants to participate in the PLA, it is done in some courtyard, it has to be cleaned and once the cleaning is done with the help of villagers, volunteers, they start drawing the village boundary. Rangoli powder is put to identify different places within the village. Finally, the mapping of the village is done. Once mapping of the village is done, matrix ranking is conducted and after matrix ranking comes the next step that is understanding seasonality in the village. Because understanding seasonality is directly linked with school calendar. So, therefore, for a teacher, for a village ed, uh, education committee members, for community members, it becomes important to understand seasonality also. Another step we talk about in PLA is chapati or we call it Venn diagram. When we say chapati, it looks like the shape of the chapati, which I am going to show you in the coming slides. Some other important things that we do in PLA is while we are doing this, when while we are conducting, we note down the findings. And also another important step is uh, talking about timeline. The timeline pertaining to the village, for example, in which year public health center has come, in which year Anganwadi is opened in your village, for the first time in which year bus service has come to village, etcetera like this we, we talk about timeline. Then wealth ranking of the village is also created. Once we do all these things with the help of villagers, we walk around the village, we call it transect walk and the transect walk will help you understand various aspects, various other scenarios that are linked with or that are have a possibility of linking uh, information with the schooling process. So, therefore, transact walk around the village is a, another important step. And also, when we are talking about uh, villagers, when we engage them for dialogue, we also study and understand their vision, the villagers vision about, about schooling, about other issues. These are some of the pictures that you can see here. In the first picture, we, as you see, it is cleaning site for conducting PLA is taking place. With the help of villagers, with the help of volunteers who are doing the PLA, we clean the site. And when the site is ready, what we do is next village boundary is drawn. 
with a stick, what we do is we, we draw roughly we draw the boundary and it has to be corrected also if it is not going rightly. And some villagers will be telling here is the uh, temple, here is the uh, school, here is the Anganwadi, here is this colony kind of thing they will be telling. And that way the road for example, village boundary is drawn. Once village boundary is drawn, next step is putting Rangoli powder. With the help of Rangoli powder, we put Rangoli so that it becomes visible with the different colors and that makes the final mapping of the village. Once the mapping of the village is done, as you can see here, matrix rank ranking is done and different materials are used when we are doing matrix ranking and also with the help of villagers, whosoever is participating voluntarily, we talk about seasonality. Different stones are used here if you can see the stones represent different seasons here and with the help of the cut papers in the shape of chapati or Venn diagram, chapati or Venn diagram is created. And while doing so, what we do is we note down the findings, also a timeline is taken and a wealth ranking is done and a transact work is also done. And studying the vision of the villagers as a whole is an important part. So, as a whole PLA becomes a very, very important uh, source of information that is going to be useful for mapping of the school. So, PLA technique tries to involve, this is, this is an opportunity to engage almost all the villagers uh, in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the village and this is how community involvement in terms of engaging, in terms of identifying, in terms of mobilizing the resource comes. So, therefore, PLA technique is uh, after survey is one of the very important technique. Next another very simple technique is called focus group test technique, repeat focus group discussion. Focus group is a small group discussion guided by a trained leader used to learn more about opinions on a designated topic and then guide future action. FGDs are either guided or unguided discussions addressing a particular topic of interest or relevance to the group and the researcher or the, or the one who is conducting the FGD. When should you use FGD? See for example, when, when considering introducing a new program or service, for example, we, we, are, we are coming up with a new scheme within the school. So, that time it is a good time to talk to villagers in FGD or when you want to ask questions that cannot easily be asked or answered in a written survey. In, in most of the cases what happens in surveys we, we rely on questionnaires on interviews. In both the interviews and questionnaire by design they have their own limitations. We cannot ask all the questions in written form every time. So, in certain cases what happens instead of survey we should go to another technique that is FGD that is focus group discussion. We can, we can engage individuals in discussion. Some of the important steps in, in uh, FGD are designing a FGD. Designing FGD refers to, to uh, the actual planning of focus group discussion. Here what is the purpose? What I am going to ask? Who are the members? how many members, how many FGDs I am going to do, entire planning is done at the first stage. Then once the planning is done, participants will be identified. Who are the participants? How these participants will be identified? Where to see? All those things. And actually the next step is, the most important step is the actual conducting of focus group discussion. And this actual FGD may last for 45 minutes or 1 hour depending upon the topic that we are going to ask or depending upon the type of questions we are going to ask or how many questions we are going to ask. So, actual conducting of the FGD becomes very important step. And once we do FGD, the next important step is analyzing the data, systematic analyzing 
the data is very important. Now, the data is in a qualitative nature, this has to be used for reporting. So, therefore, the next step is analyze the data and reporting of the information. Here, I am showing you the few steps involved in conducting FGD. You can see identifying participants or recruiting the participants, then selecting a time and place where to do this, then writing the moderator guide. Moderator's guide here refers to the questions that we are going to ask. It is always better to have questions in hand before go to the field. What type of questions, how many questions, what are the issues that I am going to discuss and in what manner I am going to ask the questions becomes very important. So, therefore, preparing a, a, a guide, a, a moderator guide, moderator is one who is conducting this FGD. So, therefore, writing in before going to the field becomes important and once you are ready with that, it is actually moderating the FGD, actual performance of the FGD. Now, analyzing, once we do this, you analyze the data and once you analyze the data, you have to report it for micro planning. While identifying the participants for your FGD, a care has to be taken. Usually, groups better to have homogeneity. A heterogeneous groups may tend to engage in discussion in different directions. It is always better to have a homogeneous groups. And even depending upon the issue and the situation, even gender wise, it is not just only gender wise groups made, mixed groups can also be made, but a care has to be taken depending upon the, the, the content of your, your FGD. And even home, in terms of age also, there, there should not be like few members are very young and few members are very old. It is always better to have a, a, a homogeneous in terms of age also. Even in terms of power also, we have to be careful when we are recruiting the participants. Selecting a time and place is very important and writing the moderator guide is also very important when we talk about FGD. And moderating the FGD revolves mainly around the skill of questioning because you may ask around say as I said, FGD, a typical FGD may last for 45 minutes and the questions have to be very important and the, the way we ask question is very important and question have to be short and to the point. Question, the one who is conducting the FGD should not engage in explaining too many things. The questions have to be in such a manner that you, you, you take minimum time in asking the questions. So, therefore, they have to be very short and to the point and the questions should focus on one dimension each. If you are asking one issue, make one question. For example, if you, if you ask a question, have you had your lunch and dinner? Here, this question has two dimensions. What will he answer? Possibility for him that he may have had breakfast, but skipped the lunch. So, therefore, try to cover question uh, one dimension each time. And usually questions have to be open ended or sentence completion types like leading questions and questions should not be like very embarrassing or they should be non threatening type of questions should be asked and they should be worded in a way that they cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. Rather we should be using why and how because in surveys we have done it with the help of yes or no type of questions. Here our purpose is not to ask their opinion in terms of yes or no. Here we are asking why, if, if no why, if yes how, all these things we are talking about. So, therefore, when we talk about FGD, FGD, the most important thing is the skill of questioning is very important. And also, there are three major types of questions that we ask that is engagement questions, second is exploration questions, third is exit questions. Engagement questions are like introductory questions, introduce participants and make them comfortable with the topic of the discussion. Then 
the most important part is get to the meat of the discussion. The, the most important questions are exploration questions. Here they become, uh, you try to cover all, all the aspects, all the issues in, in, in this stage. And the, the another type of question is exit questions. They are simply checked to see if anything was missed in the discussion. Say for example, is there anything want to add? Have you missed anything? Would you still like to add anything kind of exit question? So, these three basic questions form the basic FGD session. Like it you may you may you may feel how many uh, FGDs to be done. Normally, FGDs like it depends on the issue. One FGD is not sufficient. Sometimes you may have to do with the different groups some three FGDs, four FGDs. By the time you you, you start observing that repeated questions are coming, then you may understand that I have done uh, sufficient work on this and I may stop here. So, ideally there is 3 or 4 or 5 FGDs should help you. And uh, the most important thing in FGD is engaging all in, in, in dialogue, in discussion, not as a debate. So, therefore, FGDs reveal so many things, so many issues which surveys have not given. So, therefore, FGDs are considered very important source of information when we go for micro planning. Especially in educational things, there are various issues, issues pertaining to uh, sensitivity, issues per, pertaining to security, issues pertaining to girls education, issues pertaining to where the, the school has to be open, which area school has to be open, seasons in which schools should function, timing of the school functioning of the school, how to elect members to uh, village education committee. So, it could be so many things uh, FGDs can answer if in, in any case surveys have not given you uh, the information. So, therefore, FGDs are considered very important. Now, other few techniques relate to like for example, waves. Sometimes what happens, we need information we need opinions, we need uh, say for example, you need to, you, you want, you just want to know the people's perception and expectations from education. What do they feel? What they are talking about when they are sending their children to the schools? What is their views? What do they, they look at? What is their world view about, about overall schooling? What do they understand? What is the role of this teacher? What is their role in the school? So, by, by just talking you can get their opinions, you, you, you can study their people's perceptions and expectations from the school. Another technique that we use is house to house service. Sometimes what happens, depending upon the situation, depending upon the scenario, you, if not all the entire house uh, village survey, some house to house surveys depending upon the situation you have to do. Sometimes such information, such uh, techniques also useful in getting the information. And another technique that is the last technique from not, not just repeat, another technique that we use for micro planning is observation. Observation is the most common easily doable technique. Observation can be situational, observation can be direct, observation can be indirect, observation can be participatory. In any manner, you can do this. So, by these techniques, you get some input, some information that becomes part of your micro plan. Friends, today we were talking about uh, how to engage, how to involve the community in micro planning and uh, we discussed about various techniques ranging from survey, PLA technique, FGD, weaves, and also we studied about uh, observation technique and these are all according to me are useful in preparing micro planning at local level. Thank you.